it's a help to have a board cloth when you're chalking out your pattern on the cloth. It grips it, stops your cloth from moving around on the table below. Well. Maybe a little bit slippy in the wood, so. Okay, this is just water. I like to get with my cloth and just give it a little steaming when I get it. Just if it's anything for the shrink out of it, it just shrinks it out. I think older cloths, when they were very, very heavy, probably would have shrank a lot. I think now it's they've got the finishing worked out at this point. You want to keep the cloth straight and going in the same direction. You know, you want to, if, if this was a stripe, you'd want the stripe being parallel with the dart here. You want to see the straight, the stripe coming straight down. You don't want to see it kicking, kicking forward or kicking back. With bespoke suits, you want this suit to live with the client, to have to go to follow him through his lifetime. And as his body changes, his suit will change with him. We've got inlays that we need to add across the across the shoulders, around the armhole, down the side seams, across the bottom. Measure up from the bottom of the hem here, ten inches for my vent. I mean, I might just take it. Sort of look where my pocket is. I can have the two of them in line with each other. So I'm going to bring this actually up to do a ten and a half. I've never been in a room with a client that's ever said that the pockets are too low or too high. It's never really been an issue. Most of my clients tend to look to me for guidance. They don't just understand or trust my judgement on what details I have and where. Looks pretty good. These are bench shears as well, They're, these are for cutting the cloth. The same idea again, you rest the shear on the table, just open and close the blade. The axe is mark the wrong side of the cloth, so the inside here is the right side. When we're cutting the cloth, the cloth is cut on the double. Every piece, every pattern piece, there are two pieces. So there's a, there's a left sleeve and there's a right sleeve. There's the top, top sleeve and then there's the under sleeve. So the cloth is folded in two and the patterns are laid on top, on top and struck around. I'm going to cut our facing. I'd like to have the straight edge. We kept along the edge of the lapel. The iron's 12 pounds in weight. So you can just you know, let it do its job itself. So adding that water creates this steam which softens the cloth. I want to try and get the widest part of the cloth for my embrace. Still don't have the piece in. And I start swinging the facing around like this to allow for fullness through the chest of the coat. This is a all wool, so it'll take quite a nice bit of fullness in there. There are tailors that say a dirty inside is a clean outside. In the coat, see, so but a lot of fullness in here, so. It, but you don't really want the, coat, the the fullness to be visible when the coat's finished. You know, you want fullness in there, but you want it to shrink away and not be rippling inside the coat, so I, I wouldn't go so far as to say it needs to be dirty, but it needs to be full. Try and get as, try and compact as much fullness in here as you can, and then shrink it away, and then when you do your cross stitch on the inside, is to distribute the fullness well and lock it between the stitches. I want to keep it, I want to keep the pocket as much as I can in the chest, and not have it drop in below here. So once it drops into here, then we're right into the waist. If we were to put it like a wallet or a phone or a bunch of keys or something in here that drops down here it'll distort the waist so it'll be seen in the front of the coat so try to keep it up into the weight up into the chest having the low chest uh, helps allow for that as well because the chest is the chest is going to be much bigger here you know, if our waist was up here we'd have a lot of problems so i also have to keep in mind where my brake line is because if i have my pocket 
too close to my brake line, there's a there's a chance it will distort the front edge here. My puck was all the way over here. Started lifting, pushing the coat off. You think about a person's hand and how wide it is. How much room you need to, to get your hand in there. So I typically, for my in breasts, I loot a five and three quarters, but that would be on like a 40 inch chest. This is like a 43, so I'm going to go for a six inch. I like to have a slant on it, like not a not a very exaggerated slant, just something, just a nice slope. So when the person with their hand in is going in at an angle, so, like in consideration. Whenever we do this, we're going to hand fell the lining down. So we're going to turn the facing back. We're going to put all our fullness in our chest, pat it down, and then lay our lining on top and baste it to the edge before felling it when it's finished. Since we're not machining it, we can leave the facing to be quite wide so we'll have a lot of, a lot of cloth on the front of the coat. Uh, I kind of like that British tailoring is more structured, you know, than Italian. It's a uh, coat sort of cloth. There's more, gen more generous cloth and it's, you know, wider facings, so it gives it a bit more weight. It's suited better to the British weather. I suppose as well, but uh, you know I like it. I like the feel of the coat when it's finished. You can feel the weight in your hand, but when you put the coat on, if it's balanced properly through your, it's hanging properly right up at the back of the neck, and sitting well on the person. It, you don't feel the weight because it's hanging around your neck. That's what we're going to go with. So from our, our two yards of cloth to cut this uh, sports coat patch pockets, the double bed, obviously the one piece facing. Uh, this is the amount of cloth we've left over. <laughs> yeah, if you're more economical with the cut of your cloth, it uh, allows for a larger margin so you can be more competitive with your price.